Hey beauties, my name is Casey and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. So today I'm working with a wig from Sexy Hair Company. In the parcel, they send you a, an instructions guide on hair care and they send you a silk bag to put the wig in. So this wig is 22 inches and it is transparent lace. It is a 13 by 4 frontal and it does come slightly pre-plucked. So I just wanted to let you guys know from here that if a unit is coming to you and it's not even slightly pre-plucked, it's very likely that the knots are going to be really big and the lace is probably not going to be good either. Like, don't quote me on that 100%, but in my experience for a few years, <laughs> that's what I've noticed. So you will need developer, of course. This says 20 developer, however, it is 30 developer. My 30 developer fell and it, the cap broke and so I had to pour it in an empty 20 developer model. So 30 developer is what you need, not 20. I purchased this whisk at the dollar store. I find it mixes the developer and the bleach together really well. So I'm taking one part quick blue um, bleach and I'm gonna add one part 30 developer to that. And I'm gonna take the whisk and I'm gonna mix it out. What you're looking for is like an icing consistency, like something that's like whipped icing like buttercream icing consistency. So when I mixed it all together, I noticed that I did have the right consistency. However, it was still some little bumps of powder in there. So that means it would be still too thick. So I just took like maybe like a little bit less than half of this um, of developer and poured it in there. So what you're going to do is just pour it gradually. Um, don't do what I did and pour the whole thing. Pour gradually. The second, if it's still a little bit too thick or has bumps in it, pour gradually and stir. And then if it's still too thick, then you add a little bit more. So I stirred it up and this is the perfect consistency that I was looking for. So you need the actual bleach to hug like not drip off of the spatula or what um the whisk or whatever you're using. It needs to just stay there like whipped cream kind of thing, like whipped frosting. That's how you know you got the correct consistency. I'd like to mention, please, please, please use gloves when dealing with chemical like this. It can burn your skin and it will burn your skin if it touches your skin and it's left on too long. It will burn your skin, so please use gloves. So I just took a bit of water to pull all the flyaway hairs back so that the bleach won't touch it. I can't find my spray bottle, so you'll see me using my hand and sweating it a bit and putting water on it. So I put all the hairs back and if you notice, I flipped the wig upside down so the lace is facing me. And I'm going to take the spoon, the back of the spoon, okay? And I'm going to gather the, the cream on the back of the spoon, the sorry, the bleach on the back of the spoon and spread lightly, starting with the back of the lace because it's usually the thickest and then moving my way to the top of the lace. You have to have like a light hand when you're spreading this. You can't be pushing the bleach into the hair because what will happen is the bleach will go like bleach swells. So it will swell up and it will literally will start bleaching the actual hair and not just the knots. So the reason I start in the middle, um, the back of the lace is because that's where the, the thickest knots are. That's what I meant. The thickest knots are usually in the back. So if you start in the front, it's going to over bleach and then you're still going to have black knots in the, in the middle of the hair, which is fine, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get everything bleached. We're trying to get everything looking like a scalp, baby.
so next i'm taking a piece of foil okay and because the wig has a curvature in it i am going to use my fist to bend the foil in so that i can just place it on top of the lace so you don't want to push or tap this into the lace at all you just need to, you just need to put place it and then you're going to use your hand and flip it over like that okay and no pushing you don't need to push anything anywhere just leave it like this over because it's going to swell and it's you just don't want the mess and you're going to leave it there for about 30 minutes so i checked on the unit after 30 minutes and i'm realizing that there's still black knots on the lace and i do not like that so i'm actually going to leave it on for another 15 minutes um, just to let it process a little bit longer some some bleaches take longer to process than some um, but it's fine you just leave it on a little bit longer and let it process and do its thing So after an additional 15 minutes, I check the knots and they look much better. Um, you can see by the way that the bleach is basically through it, but not on the hair. Just all of the knots at the front are non-existent and this is exactly what you're going for. So I am satisfied. Next, it is time to stop the processing of the bleach. So you're going to drench the wig in hot water. Well, I'm sorry, just lukewarm water. Just, it doesn't need to be hot, it just needs to be regular, just for your hands to not freeze or get too hot, you know? It's just, you want to just stop the bleaching so you're washing it out. Make sure that you're washing the bleach out thoroughly with water first. Just make sure all of the bleach is completely out of the wig. Take your time, it's nothing too rush. You want to make sure that there's no white residue left in the unit before you apply any other product. So you can see that the bleach, the lace looks a little bit orange um, on the back and on the inside it looks a little bit orange like obby because it's going to have like an orange look to it because of bleach and that's just what happens. It gets a little bit brassy. So that's why we need to correct that. We need to tone that out. So I want to show you guys a new product that I've tried out and I absolutely love. So forget about shimmer lights, okay? I tried this Pantene um, Brilliant Blonde Shampoo. It's a toning shampoo as well, purple shampoo as well. However, I just find that it's so much nicer. Like I feel like it takes the, the brassiness out much faster. I feel like it works better. I think it tones better. I think it's amazing. Before any anything goes on this unit, I feel like this this right here does what you need it to do like i don't i don't like i swear by it this is what i'll be using instead i actually bought it because i ran out of shimmer lights and i'm really glad i did because baby it does what it needs to do and i love it so i got it at actually at walmart that's where i purchased it so i let that sit on the wig for about five to ten minutes to let the toning agents do its thing So after 10 minutes have passed, I am washing out the unit. I'm washing out the sh purple shampoo thoroughly out of the lace before I go on with conditioner and detangle the actual wig itself. So this is what it looks like after the blots, the blots, sorry, the knots have been toned, um, toned down. I'll put a picture of the, the before and after to show you guys exactly what the difference actually is. So it's quite significant. I am now just going to shampoo the wig with shampoo. I'm using Fructix shampoo and I'm going to use my Aussie Miracle Wave conditioner to comb through the wig and that's all you'll see me doing here and then i'm going to take a dry uh, towel and dry the wig out with the towel this is all the um shedding that i did i got um off the unit as well so i don't think that's too bad at all I decided to tone a piece of 613 hair to add a bit of a highlight to this unit as well. 
just showing you guys that <laughs> okay guys so I like to pluck the hair out while it's wet now I'll tell you why now the hair follicles are still more tender so they're gonna be easier to come out so right now I'm lining up the middle of the frontal um, where for instance if the client wanted to part her hair in the middle um, that's where that would the part would go so I that's important that you line it up with the middle of the frontal uh, so I'm parting out the middle section so the middle section you want to part off first because if for instance you were to pluck any bald spots in the wig if you part if you pluck the bald spots in the middle right here where you would want a middle part it will completely ruin your middle part so that's why you want to part that section out straight um, so that you can have a guideline as to how far away or how much you should pluck that area I am combing the hair back on the side that I'm gonna pluck um, just making sure all the hair follicles are all aligned going in one direction before I start parting out the front of the hairline so I, again I did say that this wig is pre plucked so I am actually just parting out um, the area that I feel that is the thinnest around the hair the perimeter of the hairline because that's the part that's already plucked out so I'm gonna go ahead later and pluck that out a little bit more but for now <clears throat> I want to pluck behind that so I'm taking my tweezers I got these tweezers at the beauty supply store you need like some durable heavy-duty tweezers not the little these it's just you need good tweezers like they're like two dollars at the dollar the hair store you need good tweezers and you're not gonna pluck in the part you're actually gonna pluck behind the part directly behind the part because if you pluck on the actual part itself you're going to leave a bald spot there so you want to go behind the actual part and pluck okay so that's the key to not getting a bald spot in the unit and you're just gonna grab hair and pull back little by little now when the hair is wet it's easier to pull out but it makes it that much easier as well to get bald spots so just drag line by line and take your time because it is a it is something that takes a bit of time and patience but if you don't want if you want it to be done correctly you need to have patience you need to take your time and be slow What gets tricky about plucking is that sometimes it looks like you've plucked enough until you actually go to install it and you realize that you could have plucked some more. So it's obviously always better to be able to go back in and pluck out more as opposed to over plucking and because you can't put back the hair there. Well, not easy at least. So it's going to come with gradual time. The more you do this, like the more you'll learn like what is plucked enough you know like you'll learn it just takes some time and trial and error basically so once you follow this it'll be like a guideline as to how to pluck and you'll get the basics down but as far as knowing distress sorry discretion of how much to pluck out it's going to take trial and error you're going to see that sometimes you've plucked enough and then sometimes it's just not enough and you have to go back in and pluck but it's always better to be able to go back in and pluck so now I'm just going back a little bit further on the sides um, and I'm going to pluck that out as well. Be 
sure to take a fine tooth comb, like a tail comb, and brush out the hair that's plucked out every so often. Because what happens is, if you don't do this, you will think that the hair that is not is still like looking like it's attached is still there, and it'll make it look like there's more hair than is actually there. So you need to pluck it out. I mean, sorry, you need to comb it out every few every few plucks so that you can see what hair is left behind after the hair that's actually plucked out is removed. So that's make sure that you, every so often you comb out the hair that um, is already plucked out. So you don't want to pluck in one place too long like or a pluck in one place for more than one stroke or one two to two strokes at most you have to you have to use your discretion to see how loosely that how easily the hairs are actually coming out when you pluck it so that's what you have to look look for so if it's coming out very easily one stroke if it's coming out a little bit harder you can do two strokes in one area but make sure it's just two strokes and pass through never pluck too much in one area at all so I brushed all the hair back now, so I am starting to pluck behind the front. I'm not plucking the front of the hair because that will leave bald spots. I'm plucking directly behind it. So that's what I'm just showing you guys here a little bit up, up closer. So you guys can actually see that I'm not plucking on the front of the hairline. I'm plucking just behind it. Also, please make sure you're holding the tweezers correctly. This way, if you try to plug that way, you're gonna poke. You're gonna poke nothing but holes in it. You gotta make sure that the sharp part is facing the front, and you're pulling back. Because if you have the sharp part facing the actual lace itself, pointing down to the lace, you are gonna have a hole within your first one or two um, strokes, a thousand percent. Okay, so make sure you're holding it the correct way. So it does get a little bit dry pretty fast. So I'm just using a little bit of water just to see how much I've plucked out. Like I use the water also because it's like when you are actually going to style, you you'll actually get to see what has been plucked. Your basically you get to see your progress of where how much you need to pluck or how much you've actually plucked out. What it might look like realistically when you actually go to apply it onto skin. So that's what I'm showing you, the difference between the side that came pre-plucked and my plucking. So I went ahead and I plucked the other side off of camera. So this is what the results look like. Um, I put a little white paper towel under it. It's also another good guideline to use um, to see where you've plucked. It's almost like just replaces the actual skin for you to pluck on. It's just that when the wig is too wet, it'll just like basically just dampen the cloth and then it's useless. This is all the hair I plucked out, guys. So here's the final look, guys, after I have dried and styled the unit off of camera. If you did find this tutorial helpful, please do not forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel where I will be posting more content like this for you guys to see. If you have any questions, please leave them below or any content that you'd like to see in the future. Let me know and I'll try my best to make it happen. Thanks for watching. Bye.